the library is such a fun building in this village, not only because I love books, but because of these amazing windows. If you look, this library has windows all over and we do detailed stitching on the chiffon, which seems like something you couldn't do, but guess what? We can. I'm gonna stitch that with you today and I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it so you don't feel nervous when it's your turn. Also with the library comes another set of trees, my favorite. These ones are called the pine trees and they're a little bit different than the ones that came with the boarding house. These ones have kind of a triangle shape bow, so that's why they are named the pine tree. And they come with two different designs. This one that has the orb lights that match the library perfectly. Look how cute they look together. It's a perfect match. And then another one that has a lot of fun stuff on it. So we have bells and it looks like poinsettia and just little fun things to make this a little bit extra special. So this way you have more trees to go in your holiday village. So today I'm going to stitch with you just the back of the library so we can learn how to do those amazing windows. I've already hooped our light mesh cutaway stabilizer. We're gonna put it in the machine and stitch our placement line. Just so you know, I have put a nice dark gray thread in my machine just so that you can see the placement line for the tutorial. However, when you stitch your own at home, go ahead and use a natural colored thread. Okay, now that we have this placement line stitched, I'm gonna just talk you through it for a brief moment. So right here, these lines are our stitching lines, and then this is the shape of the building. And these are what we're going to use when we stitch the building together. This, however, we wanna make sure we completely cover with our shape form so that we can tack it down nicely. So I'm gonna take that shape form, place it over our placement line, and we're gonna tape it down nice and taut. Just like that, and we'll put it in our machine. Again, I'm gonna keep my thread that dark gray color just so that you can see this tack down line and the scoring guides. Okay. So now that we have this tack down line and our scoring guides lines all nice and stitched, we're going to trim away the excess shape form. We're just gonna take our scissors, and we're gonna put it right here in the corner, and we're going to start cutting nice and close. Now that we have our shape form all nice and trimmed close to that stitch line, we're going to make sure that we cut between those scoring guides. We're gonna grab our ruler and our rotary cutter. And again, I do a little better if I stand, so I'm going to we're gonna line that up and we're gonna cut all the way through the shape form and the stabilizer. And then we're ready to stitch the placement line for the fabric. I'm gonna go ahead and switch my thread out for this one so that we don't see it on the final product. Okay, now that I've switched my thread out, we're going to go ahead and stitch machine step three. Okay, now that I have that placement line stitched, I'm going to take my piece of fabric that has already been starched and pressed, and we're going to place it over that placement line, trying to make sure that we have at least a quarter inch above and below the fabric. We're gonna tape it taut in place. And then I like to just smooth the fabric as I'm going across to make sure that it lays nice, and then tape it well. And I do the same thing. I smooth on this side and tape. And then to make sure I try and avoid any give, I smooth again and then tape on this other side. And then once I like my placement, I'm gonna put it in the machine and we're going to stitch machine step number four, which is the tack down line. Machine step five is stitching the library decorative detailed lines. I'm gonna go ahead and switch my thread out to the correct color and then we'll stitch it. Machine step six is stitching the decorative lights detail. I'm gonna go ahead and switch out my thread right now and then we'll stitch it.
Machine step seven is stitching the window stitch lines. So we're gonna do that right now. Okay, now that we've got those stitches done, I wanna show you how cute this library is so far. So, so far we have the really cute decorative lines and the decorative light details. And then we have where we're gonna be cutting out all these windows. So it's been a while since we've cut windows together, so let's cut some today. We're just going to make sure we rotate our hoop so that we're cutting in the same place every time. I'm gonna take my seam ripper, we're gonna put it right in the corner and we're just gonna puncture that fabric and kind of get it more at like a 40 degree angle. And then we're gonna push it through and glide the seam ripper up. And I'm gonna turn my hoop so I keep it in the same place. We're gonna glide it around the corner and we're gonna keep rotating. And then we're gonna go down the other side and then I'm gonna pull it out, rotate again so we're in the same place. We're gonna puncture in we're gonna glide to the other side and then we can lightly remove things. So sometimes you have a thread that catches and you can just clip it. And I like to use my scissors or my seam ripper to just kind of pry that shape form up. And then I like to turn my hoop over to the back and just make sure I get all of that stabilizer out of my window, just like that. Now we have three more to cut. So again, right in the corner, put your seam ripper at that 45 degree angle, glide it up and around the curve, turn your hoop so you're cutting in the same place, keep gliding around the curve and then down the opposite line and then stop. Give it a turn, pop your seam ripper in and then finish the line out. They're really nice, especially if you have a really nice seam ripper. Now that we have cut all of our windows, we're going to take our hoop and we're going to flip it to the back. And we're gonna take our already starched and pressed chiffon and lay it across all of those windows, making sure that they're all completely covered. And then we're going to add all of the tape. We wanna make sure that the chiffon stays nice and in place. So I start usually by putting the tape in the corners on one of the sides and then I'll smooth the chiffon and put tape on each of the sides here and here and then continue smoothing the chiffon and because this is such a long building I'm going to add a little bit of extra tape on either of the sides and then I'm going to catch the corners as well so that there's not a lot of chance of that chiffon going anywhere. And then after we have everything nice and taped, we're going to flip our hoop back over and we're gonna put it back into the machine. Machine step eight is stitching the satin grid and outline of one of the windows. This is what we get to do before we start stitching all of those amazing books. This window is located on the side of the library, just right here. So let's get to it. All right, so I just wanna quickly show you this really cute satin window. That's how it turns out. Now these next windows, they look a little bit funny for the next steps because we're going to be layering. The first step we're going to do is we're gonna be stitching that beautiful book detail in the window, which seems impossible, but it isn't. And then we're gonna stitch the bookshelves and all of a sudden it starts coming together a little bit more. And then after that, we're going to stitch the satin outlines for the windows and then they look complete and they are gorgeous. So let's get started right now. We're gonna change the thread to our light brown color. Now we've tried a lot of different colors in the windows and we've decided that the brown color showed up the best and we wanted to make sure that when there was a light glowing in the house that you could actually really see those books and if it was bright during the day you could still see those books which is why we went with a dark color. Machine step nine is stitching those book outlines. Okay, I have to pull this out for just a second so you can see these books. Look how cute they are. Okay, they look like they're floating for a second. We'll give them a shelf. But otherwise, look at that detail right on the chiffon. It is incredible. And, and they're books. All right, let's give them a shelf before they look too funny. 
Machine step 10 is stitching that bookshelf for those books and it's the exact same color so we can just go ahead and carry right on. So I'm pulling this out again because I want to show you how good these books look with the bookshelf on there. So they're just sitting now on a little bookshelf. Still looks a little bit unfinished, but don't worry. We have the satin outline for the windows and then they're going to look just beautiful. And if you take a look, we have two different colors. So we have the red one in the middle and the blue ones on either side. So we're going to stitch the ones on either side right now and then we'll do the one in the middle after that. Let's get to it. So now that we've stitched those two windows, we're going to go ahead and switch our thread out and stitch that final satin outline stitch for the last window. Let's go! Okay, and with that final window outline, we are done with this library, at least the back of it. So here's what it looks like. Isn't it so amazing how all those layers make these windows look incredible and how it makes it look like those books are not just stitched on the chiffon, but they're inside the library. I absolutely love it. Well, after we've stitched that final window, we can go ahead and remove our hoop. We can trim around it and get it ready to glue and join the other parts of our library building. So we're gonna again, we're gonna cut really close right against that stitch line on the sides. And then on the top and bottom, we're gonna leave plenty of fabric for gluing. We're gonna go around. I'm gonna cut off some of that extra so we can see. I'm gonna cut, leaving enough here and then right against the stitch line. And then again, right here, close to the bottom, but leaving at least a quarter to three eighths of an inch for gluing. And then after we have all of that, we can remove it and we can clip our corners and everything, get it all set and ready to go. And we'll be ready to finish our building. So then we'll finish the rest of it and it will end up looking just like this. Now that we've had fun stitching one of the walls for the library together, we're going to talk about these pine trees that come with it. They are so cute and adorable and they're so fast. And that's my favorite part about them. I seriously can make a hundred of these. But today let's limit ourselves to one. I think we'll do this one. This one matches with the libraries we talked about before, so it'll be a perfect match for this tutorial. Now that we're going to stitch one of our pine trees, I've already hooped our light mesh cutaway stabilizer. We're gonna put it into the machine and we're going to stitch the stitch lines so that we know where to sew our tree together. And I'm going to do that in a red color just for visual purposes for the video today. However, when you do it at home, go ahead and use a neutral color. Machine step two is stitching the placement line for the tree. I'm going to leave that red color in just so that we can see this clearly. Okay, so let's take a look at this. This line on the inside right here is the stitch line. And this one around the outside is the placement line. So we're going to take our piece of felt. We're going to lay it completely covering that placement line, making sure that it is covering at least a quarter inch on all sides. And then we're going to tape it securely in place. And then I'm going to switch my thread out. Machine step four is also in the same color. So we're going to go ahead and leave the dark green in. And now we get to stitch the pine boughs. Machine step five is stitching those beautiful globe lights that match the library. So we're going to change our thread really quickly to that white color and then we'll stitch it. All right, now that we've got those globe lights all nice and stitched, we can remove our project from the hoop. Just set that aside and then we're gonna take our scissors and with these trees, we're gonna cut fairly close. We don't wanna cut the stitch line, but we don't wanna to cut too far away from it either. So you're just going to stay fairly close and cut as even as you can so that it has a nice rounded edge here. And then same with the sides. We're going to stay nice and close because we already have extra in our side seam that we stitched at the beginning. So we're gonna cut close 
and then close again. And then if we turn it over, you can see the red dots here, which show you exactly where to stitch. And then the other ones up here, which is where we had our placement line. So we're going to take our tree and we're going to fold it right in half, lining up all of our edges. And then we can put some clips in here to hold it in place. And then we're going to take it to the sewing machine and we're going to sew. I like to start at the top here and then sew down to the point. So we'll do that really quick. Now that we have it sewn, we're going to clip off the extra fabric and then we're going to take our tree and we're just going to turn it inside out. It's fairly easy to flip, but after you get to this point, you can grab a point turner and go ahead and help it push the rest of the fabric all the way through. I kind of do a little bit of a rotating movement with my wrist so that I can get the point nice and crisp looking. Do it gently, however, because we do not want to puncture the felt. And once you have it done, you have a tree. Thank you so much today for joining me for this mini tutorial for the library and one of the pine trees. I hope that you enjoyed it and that you learned a little something too. Make sure to like and subscribe and follow us for more content and go enjoy some well-deserved me time. <laughs>